why Manchester? Because I'm here for Octagon commentating. Uh, uh, working, so I'm just trying to make sure I repurpose my time as much as possible, get as many things done. So I'm here for a big fight show uh, that I'm commentating on tomorrow. While I'm here, I'm just trying to get as many guests as I can from the area, locals and that. And I spent a bit of time in Manchester because I used to train here back in the day with Carl, who's one of my first guests. I fought Manchester Arena a year, 10 years ago against Andrew, Andrew Craig. Craig. Yeah, Andrew Craig. Um, got fired the night, or knock out the night, performance of the night, or submission of the night, because I knocked him out twice and submitted him once, so I get confused which one it was. Um, but yeah, ten, 10 years ago, long fucking time ago when I was a skinny little little boy, but, uh, but it was good. It was a good night. I was For that fight, no one thought I was going to win. No one, because he just beat Chris Lieben who back in the day was like a name and was somebody and I was this new kid coming up. And even Joe Rogan, when he was uh, commentating on the fight, he called me unathletic and something else. He was like proper rude about me and then I knocked the guy out twice and submitted him. So, you know, Rogan learned something that night. We, we all learn lessons every single day, you know, it's fine. It feels like a different life. It feels like a completely different time. This is a rough area, this. And you got the United over there. Always yeah, good to switch base with Luke yeah, and the fact that we get to have the conversation that we've not had for yeah, a few months filmed for the viewers' voyeuristic pleasure and everyone's win. We've got two guys fighting tomorrow, big event, Manchester Arena, first one uh, there since we had an event there uh, about six years ago now, blimey. Um, so yeah, looking forward to it. Okay, welcome guys. Here we are in Manchester on location for the All Ears podcast. And because we are in Manchester, I had to bring a man on who represents Manchester. So done, finished with Carl now. Uh, podcast one finished. We've got uh, Kane up on the way now as well whenever he gets here. Then we've got one more today. Then dinner, whatever, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what's going on. And then um, fights are tomorrow, so. Busy, busy day, but we good. Looking forward to seeing Kane and, and catching up. There he is. Yes. What's going on? I'm good, mate. They oh. say, be, what they say behind the scenes, be yeah, Exactly, everything, mate. They didn't what? let me know that I'd be behind the scenes, but look, I'm ready and equipped to deal with any situation. What's going on, big dog? Mate, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. We've got the whole view of Manchester. This is a different time is, to set up this. The boys are... Can I have you a drink, mate, from water, sparkling water, coffee? Um, I'll go with, um, I'll go with some sparkling water, please, bro. Yeah, yeah cold and wet, all right, you know that one, you know. All right, this is my beer. You know what I'm saying? Um, so how's everything else? Good, mate, good, 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 good. We'll sit down and we'll chat. Let's get straight into it, man. Nice one. Catch you later. All right, then, sweet, no problem, guys. Um, oh, fuck it. Oh, where are you at? You there, I'm here. Unless you've got a specific side that I'm at. Oh, boy. Um, this is gonna be fucking, this will be special. This. I have uh, a great guest who has lived a very, very life and is now a surgeon into a whole new realm. So it's a very interesting conversation. I hope you guys enjoy it. Right, Kane. So what is harder? Building up a successful clothing brand like you have with Bada or spending time in prison? I've been through so much in my life that my, my everything I've been through, the stories I've been through, and because I've been able to overcome all the challenges, there's a lot of lessons in there for people. And I want to, like I said to you, I want to impact other people's lives. So what I went through can help people get through. And you know what? People might remember me, man. So where, where's next now for you? What are you doing after you go from here to where? Um, fuck knows. I go home on Monday. I'm here till Monday because I'm going to do, I've got a podcast on Sunday. Are you with? Uh, a guy called Warren. He, he's fighting in Crypto Fight Night. He's boxing against Aaron Chalmers. Oh, okay. Then, um, Who's the kid? Warren, I'll show you. Sure. You probably, probably would have seen him. Uh, so he's fighting Aaron Chalmers? Yeah, but he was supposed to be fighting. Can he have it, yeah? Uh, he was supposed to fight this guy, Jack Fincham, but he mm. pulled out. So last minute they replaced him with Chalmers. So he like kind of lucked out. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you. Well, let me know, I'll be there for sure. I'm, I'm going. I need to book my flights here, but I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> I go home and then I've got Germany two weeks or whatever it is, then from Germany I'm going to go to Romania, see the boys, and then from there I'm going to go to Dubai and then I get back. Like nice. You know chasing state, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Today is a day of competition. Now listen, I know some of you guys are friends, but when you get into the arena, it's your team versus their team. All that matters 
matters is you guys always be <laughs> captains. Come up to the front. No. <laughs> You've never had another junior apparel brand with photo sign that's done anything like that. <laughs> I mean, so we're, we're working, we're working, trust me. Obviously, I did a couple of podcasts, but then I got asked to go on a podcast as well while I was here, but they're going to use the space. So uh, these two coming up here, they run something called the Everyday Perspective. It's a different podcast. So I'm going to be a guest on their podcast, so they're going to use you know, my setup to, to interview me. And I'm a bit more talkative when I'm, I'm the guest. As the host, I'm pretty sensible, but when I'm, uh, I'm on the podcast, I'm a bit more fun. Your self-relationship with partners, with business partners, with women, whatever you want to call it. That's always lacking as well. And then number three is money. But money comes at the end. Business and money always comes at the end of what you should be trying to achieve. Every day before the fights, on the day we have a meeting between me, Brian, Andre, and all the commentary team, we get together and we talk through all the fights. Last about an hour, so we're going to do that now, it's fight day, talk about the fights, we make some predictions and have a good good chat and really get to know any little tips about the fights, any information that we have, you know, like some secret stories or some things that we picked up. So then when we broadcast, we can give everyone a really good overview of the person, the fight, the, what they've been going through. It's like a really important meeting. It takes like an hour, hour and a half sometimes. Yeah, I've been with Octagon a couple of, what, a couple of years now. I've done a load of events and yeah, the team here. What makes me think of, when I was in the UFC, about 10 years ago, whenever it was, before it, before the UFC sold to a big conglomerate company, and before they became like a real high-end business that was all about profitability and all that sort of stuff, the UFC was, I remember being in the hotel and, you know, Sean Shelby being there and Joe Stewart, and you'd meet all of the, the, the big wigs, if you want to call that, in, in, in the sport. And now you don't, if you go to the Fighters Hotel or a UFC event, you don't see nobody because they're all hidden away. And it's kind of like that now, I feel like we're in that stage where, like I said, the owners are here, everyone's here, they're all enjoying it. They're like a, they're like a real tight knit family of guys, even the Octagon Mop guy, the guy that cleans the cage, I can't remember what his Instagram handle is, but he cleans the cage, he's here with all the people and they'll have a little party afterwards, it's like a real family environment, you know, i got a great relationship with the owners and I feel a big part of the team and yeah, it's, it, it's always good, it's always good. Just on my way now to go do a VT, like a talking head, talking about the tip sport game changer and how impactful it's been for Octagon and how it's changed the, the dynamic of the the event and everything and how people have had so many eyes on it. Tip sport game changer is a tournament, it's for a million euros, 16 fighters, it's like a pyramid scheme when we get to the finals. The finals is gonna be at the end of the year, so we're yet to know who the champion is, but I'm just doing like a review of it, talking about it and, and, and doing some, you know, some VT for, to push it, so the events and some adverts and stuff we put out. Um, all of us are doing it and then they'll chop it up and they'll make it look good. So even if I fuck it up and my I say something stupid, they'll cut it out and they'll make, they'll make me look, I'll look good, trust me. What was the coach? What sorry. But it's excellent, I really love it. Okay, it's right. like the thriller, like you are following something. I just need to go again with that. Go, go, go. Okay. It'll be endeavor. So just going to try and go find Shamrock. He, um, his fight got cancelled because he kicked his opponent uh, at the weigh-ins and damaged his rib or something. So the fight's called up. So I'm going to try and get hold of him and uh, try and get him on the podcast tomorrow. Why is that? Why is that? Why is that? This constant showing off. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. That's what I'm trying to But um, basically, I was going to ask you after the fight, but I'm doing, I'm doing a podcast tomorrow. So I wondered if you wanted to come on and talk about how this comes from. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah, We'll talk tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, so he'll be on the podcast tomorrow in Elizabeth Tower. We can talk to him all about basically his opponent pulled out or didn't pull out, but got injured from the kick, and he's obviously devastated. You can tell by his body language and all that sort of stuff. But then we can get deep into why it happened, what's happening, how he feels about it when the next fight's gonna be, how it affects him, because this means now, like, he won't get paid, because he's not fighting, so that's gonna affect him pretty badly. He's gotta wait for money, and I know what it's like as a fighter when you're, you know, you're fighting paycheck to paycheck on these fights. He does all right, but it's, 
it's going to be a big blow for him. You know, obviously not being able to fight is, is tough too, but then the financial ramifications and how it affects his life and okay, and then maybe maybe he's got a because I think they're talking about him fighting at the O2 maybe, but that's like no Christmas because O2 is uh, the 28th or the 30th of December, so he won't be able to celebrate Christmas with the family. Uh, so th there's loads of stuff that we'll get into with the podcast. Uh, at these events, time is scarce, so busy, 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 but. No, I love it. I love being. I'm always traveling. I think the next event's in Cologne, in Germany, in a couple of weeks. After that, I go to Dubai. Like I'm always moving about, but um, no, it's good. It's good. I, I, I love being busy. Like I want. I always say, I want. I want to be busier. I want more pressure. I want more things to do. I want more things to worry about because then it's like when you have nothing to do, you just waste time. When you have so much stuff to do, you just get on with it. You know. So I think. Um, yeah. No, I don't get pulled pillar to post. I'm. I'm enjoying it podcast studio that you've set up in my day has gone really well what's your plans for that in the future yeah we had the studio maybe five six months it's going great we haven't really pushed it that much so good moving into the next summer when all the influencers and people like that with podcasts come back uh, to Marbella then we'll, we'll really really push it um, at the moment uh, it's being used a lot by me and a couple of local guys and it's uh, yeah it's great it's, it's, it's a real hub for me like a base like a home and I just want to pump out content you know like this again with this vlog first time doing a vlog but i'm going to start vlogging doing lives i'm doing loads of podcasts already um, just content 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 so in the next year i'm you're going to see me everywhere it's very difficult to like expose yourself to the world like the vlogging part is the hardest part for me and talking to the camera and, and taking the, the criticism on and all that sort of stuff it is challenging. People will say it's nice, it's hard. So um, when I was fighting the UFC, if I'd have done this 10 years ago, and, and the, my life in the last 10 years and the story, and if I'd have captured it on footage and spoken about it, it would, yeah, I'd be, I'd have huge followings. And my following's going up, it's growing. And I think my voice is being heard and a lot of viewership. And I've got a great story to tell and things to say. So I think it's inevitable that the, the, the following's gonna grow. Um, I just think you've got to be open. And it's very, can feel tough to like open up and talk about your life. And I think that's what I struggled with for a long time. And now I'm, I could care less. So I just let everyone see what I'm doing, what I'm up to, and, and I, I speak from the heart. Whereas before I was a little bit, to be honest, I just focused on fighting. I was just so focused on fighting, I didn't think about anything else in the world. I didn't, and I used to think this stuff was a bit embarrassing. Like I'd see other people doing it, and I'd just be like, oh, I never want to be that guy. It's embarrassing to like, put yourself out there. Why do you have to do it? But when you understand it better, um, you know, I think it's a positive to, to try and spread a message. There's so much negativity out there. And when you realize that, because I was only looking at the world from my eyes. When I'm looking at the world from my eyes, I don't, you don't realize how much help people need. Then when you see it from other people, and you see it from like a 14 year old kid that's struggling, he, he needs a voice. You know, I've, I was fortunate enough to have a great dad, two brothers, support system, great gym, great people around me, a great support network, but um, a lot of people don't have that. So they rely on YouTube and they rely on listening to these voices. And if you listen to the average guy talking on YouTube, they've got nothing interesting to say and they've got nothing important to say and they have no right to say some of the things they say. A lot of the big influencers, the famous million followers, two million followers guys, all they've ever done is YouTube. So they've actually not done anything with their life and they don't have any, uh, any knowledge to bestow on the world. And I think that's a problem. So that's kind of what influenced me to, to do this, to, to, to share my story and my life a little bit more because I want to inspire people. I want people to grow from it and I want to grow from it. It's a selfish endeavor. I think the more I put my personal brand out there, the more I have, the more I have to push myself, the, the more interesting stuff I've got to do, the more entertaining I've got to be, the better I've got to be at speaking, that I've got to get better. So I, I, I think that's a huge part. Heading over to the arena now, this is the hotel I've been staying at. And, um, I'm all ready, all dressed up, ready to do my thing. In the, in the smart looks, so we can look at it when I get to the arena. Uh, we've got about an hour, hour and a bit till the show starts, get over there, get settled, find out our position, get cage side, and uh, get warmed up and ready to go. So, it should be a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm just gonna stay at the camera because you, you only want to answer people in the camera, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. I'll never be on camera then. <laughs>
We normally just see like uh, before the event, before we start letting the people in, we let the crowd in. You get all the fighters, they come in and they just do like a little warm up, they get to fill the cage, they get to walk around. So, uh, you know, you see them pretend to like fight, you know, like go through it in their mind, what they visualize, what they thought about. You can see it, you can, you can see it here, you know, hands raised, visualization. Three judges around the cage, all the commentary team. Ring girls are over here. Ring girls are by me. I don't know why, how it's organised by that, but it just is. Um, and then, yeah, then you got the, the guys that paid the big money to they'll all sit here. I don't know how much these tickets are. They're cut like grand, a couple of grand each just to sit at the front row. Um, I think we've done seven, seven thousand tickets for this show. First time in the UK. It's a pretty big number. Um, so should be, should be a good night. Should be, should be mental. Me and gone through, gone through the commentary, me and gone through all the fights, understand that, done this a million times, so understand that how it all works. Just warm up my voice a little bit because I've had a surgery on my throat, so I do that kind of privately and then, uh, yeah, we just go through the fight card and wait for the start. So then we start in about 20 minutes. So just chill till then, really. Did you get nervous at No, no, like, feel, feel something. Like, it depends on the card and who's fighting, but this card, I, I know so much about all the fighters back in Manchester. I know the arena so well. So many things to talk about. And I, I love talking, so it's easy. If you've just got to speak about something that I know about, it's easy. It, bro. Thank you, thank you. These guys are judging, and Ben was a judge of my first ever fight. So back in the day when I had a fight, he was there. It was 15 years ago, or whatever. That's when you started as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So we've been in the game a while, and he's here to, you know, to make sure the, the, the decisions go the right way. Yeah. What show was that? July, July 2010. It was his first amateur one. Not even first pro. Where? Shooting or shoots, or shoots brawl in uh, uh, Northampton. Uh, he fought a guy from uh, he Chris Kelly. From, he fought Chris Kelly from Spartan. Oh yeah, Chris Kelly. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I see Chris man. Kelly fighting Stoke. Yeah. Oh, yeah. pretty, Chris Kelly messaged me, I'll message someone I know saying, I know Luke, and he just beat me with one punch or something. Yeah, yeah. I was like, bro, watch the fight back. I smashed him. It's fine. <laughs> but anyway, he, he judged it. He know what I want, so it's all good. It's all good. And those guys have been at it forever. They're some of the most solid judges as well. They follow all the system, like they, like you said, from grassroots, doing like sports halls, like I said, 15 years ago with me, two, two, 2010, so 13 years ago with me, doing sports halls. And now they do all the UFCs, all the biggest events, and they're like the judges. They're the highest elite level for MMA because they're, they're not like boxing judges that become MMA judges or judo judges, they're, they're MMA judges and they learn the systems. And they, they, those two in particular are extremely good. If I watch a fight and there's like a, a split decision or a fight that everyone says is close if I see that they're judging on the card I always wherever they go I, I think that's right so I always double check it they're a good litmus test for, for how it should be Polipka that. Polipka took the fight on three or four weeks notice, taking on a legend like Lee Chadwick, who's had 48 fights for all over the world. Polipka, a young kid, has a bit of a mixed record. Real big win for him.
USA. So being here in the UK, this is I only travel when I, from my family when I'm in the UK or when I'm going to Octagon event. And now it's mixed, so I think it's super sick. It's very nice. I think there's an okay turnout for the first show. So I'm just passing. Professional fight, he went four rounds, he went into championship rounds. What, what, what a night for him. My UFC debut, I set the record for the amount of strikes landed in a middleweight fight at 278 shots landed. In four rounds of the output that he had, he landed 248. That, so that just, seeing the stats here makes me realize how much of a fucking machine that I am. But no, I'm only joking. It was a great output, and he, for him, as his pro debut, to go four rounds, to put on a relentless onslaught that he did, incredible stuff. And the crowd don't like Frimpong. So we, I just looked it up because I was interested. 256, I said 257, but 256 shots landed in one fight in three rounds. What a tempo. I'm not eating the buns, but I'm having a hot dog, alright? Leave me alone. I'm hungry. Jonas has always changed shit. He's always fun to watch. These two going at it will be a crazy fight. December 29th. I think they'll put it on the Newcastle card in January. We'll see. But like I said they love Jonas loves it. A 41-year-old comedian buying a 35-year-old reality TV star. For some reason, I don't know why. But I've got no idea how it's going to be. I'm, I don't know what, I don't know again. I want Paul Smith, because he's the old boy, the funny man from Liverpool. I want him to get it done, but I think Jake's going to floor it. We'll see, we'll see. Zero, zero, zero. They tell jokes and sing songs. It's going to be good. Sharp on the feet, sharp hands, good straight punches, landed very, very well. You know, um, I feel for both the guys that they, they put it on like, here's the thing, when you step up and you do something like this in front of the fans, especially as a celebrity, there's going to be negativity, there's going to be naysayers. There will be people that talk about Smith now, like, what was that? Bro, he fucking stepped up, got in there, gave it everything, tried his best, and he fell short, but it was an experience for him. And all the weight that he's lost, the lifestyle changes he's made, it's incredible for him, it's incredible for Smith. Quicker than an athlete, he's a beast, and we see it in there, the difference. Younger man, athletic, landed those big shots. You know, it's, it's impressive from him to want to do this as well, but for me it's way more impressive that Smith decided to do it, got in that cage, laid it on the line, and you know, went for it. He failed, but that's life, good on him. Hey, 
main event time, yeah, title fight. Aaron A.B. gone through hell in his life and gone through everything physically, survived cancer to be here to fight for a title. Storybook ending. He said that he's destined to be here and destined to win this title. He wants it to be a full five-round fight. He wants two rounds to him, two rounds to Garcia, going into the fifth, and that's how he wants to win it. A storybook ending to his journey. It's a big ass. Elias Garcia is a monster, so one hell of a main event. Can't wait to see how it unfolds. sometimes and crazy things happen but that cut the kind of you know an anticlimactic finish to an amazing fight an amazing event first time we've been here in the uk and i think i feel like ab was was winning he won the first round definitely um, garcia was coming back and he was making it fun and it was going to be a great fight but just such a sad way to see it and i hope they do it again like especially for a title and everything the whole story of ab and surviving cancer and everything that he's gone through you could see how emotionally it affected him and yeah i just think uh i hope i hope we get to see that one again I would do the Exciting, whatever. Like that fight, I mean, the guy he fought was, was not great, but the guy he fought was poop. The guy he fought in the contendership was shit as well, yeah. and he beat him. He was like 15 and 8. The guy he fought in the contender. You're gonna cut your hair and grow a little bit. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm gonna cut it off. You know, he had like a urine infection. Well, he cut his hair and he got a urine infection. That's why he never cut it again. Really? Yeah. yeah. So if I cut it, he's gonna go. Ah! <laughs> he's like a super saiyan. If he loses yeah. his hair, he's fucked. <laughs> right. So the fight's done, action's done, now we've got the press conference, post-fight press conference, they will talk, chat some shit, shout at each other, try and make a scene, call out fighters, talk about how the event was, go check it out. Well, job done now, had those 10 fights, crazy night, press conference is finished. Knackered, don't know if you can hear my voice. We've got two more podcasts tomorrow, more work to get done. I'm gonna go home, chill, get some sleep. And then I'll see you light in the morning. Nice one, boys. We're on day three, uh, second day of podcasting. I've got Warren in first, got a couple of podcasts today. We did three on Friday, then I commentated all day yesterday and worked all day. Didn't have a crazy night last night. I got a nice rest because I want to get deep into it with Warren and, and we got yeah, we got him for an hour and a half. Then I got Shemrock showing up uh, about three o'clock. So should be a solid day. Wrap the hoodie. But I guess you're sponsored by these guys, huh? What's that, so, sorry? So you do like a post now. About no, they just made the they just made the uh, the hoodies for me. But these aren't even the ones that I want to I want to put out. Welcome guys to another episode of the All Ears podcast. We're on location here in Manchester again with this six setup in the sky, 47th floor here, uh, Elizabeth Tower. What do you think's harder, living the monotonous life of running multiple businesses and doing the same thing over and over again and going to the office or dealing with fight camp and the hardship of training every day and pushing your body to the limit? What's a tougher challenge? Good. Yeah, man. This is me, please. Uh, this is Warren. Right, it's going to be hard to even hear that question. 
coffee, spark and water. Um, Check the use plans on the wall, you know. <laughs> we fancy. Go on, I'll be parched today, lad. Like. Well, we've even got a spark and water for you. So double parched in the wine fridge, of course. Uh, wine fridge, glass bottle. Yeah. Shem, what's been harder for you? Being on the run from the police for 10 years or missing out on this fire the weekend that just happened? Three days of my voice going on, chatting. Like I said, we did, I think we managed five podcasts. Don't know how many hours in total it was, plus me commentating last night at Octagon. Great experience, great show. But look at all the kit we invested in for this for this podcast in IR. It's gonna be the first time we've done it in uh, you know, in Manchester or on location. We've got Dubai in a couple of weeks. We've got uh, Germany. We're going all over the world with it. So, you know, putting in the hours, putting in the effort, work, 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 work. But that brings us to the end of the Manchester trip. I hope you guys got some insights, got to look into, you know, what I get up to and what I do. And uh, yeah, check out the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm gonna be vlogging a little bit more. And you get to see like the back end, the, the behind the scenes of my life and everything that I'm doing at the moment. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Really appreciate you, you know, coming on this journey with me. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.